Good morning. Welcome to church today. Are you glad to be here? All right. I know you're glad to be anywhere. But it's especially good to be here. Sing together. We will sing, sing, sing. And make music with the heavens. We will sing, sing, sing. Grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. Let's sing that again. We will sing, sing, sing. And make music with the heavens. We will sing.
Jesus, I surrender. Make me Savior, holy love. Let me feel Thy Holy Spirit. Truly know that Thou art mine. I surrender all. I surrender all. Lord, to be my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Lord, to Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself.
this morning. We desire you more than anything else in this world. And Father, this week we have given up something extremely important to us, to draw closer to you. And Lord, you know each one of us what we have sacrificed. And Father, I trust that you have drawn close to us to give us strength. Whether it be physical strength, spiritual strength, emotional strength mental strength, Lord. We thank you for this week. And Father, your promises don't lie in this week only. Your promises are far greater than what occurred over the last seven days. And Father, I'm excited for the time that we can look back and we can point to this fast. We can point to this corporate body sacrificing as a unit for your glory throughout the year. Father, I'm excited for the future. I'm excited what you've done, what you will do, and what you continue to do in this church, in the lives of your people. Father, we think of those who can't be with us this morning. Sick, shut in, unable to get here. And we just pray a blessing upon their lives, Lord, that they will experience your presence this morning. Jesus, you have been very real to us. You continue to be very real to us. Continue to draw us closer to you, to that intimate relationship. We glorify you. And Father, as we prepare our hearts for the offering this morning, I just ask again that you will remind us of how blessed we truly are. Father, thank you for the little things that we take for granted each and every day. Thank you for, for, for blessing us so richly. And Father, our hope and our riches do not lie in this world. They are in you, Jesus. And Lord, as we give back to you so little this morning, we just ask that you will take this gift and you will bless it and you will magnify it. Lord, speak to hearts even in this moment. Father, we've come prepared to give our tithes and offerings, but Lord, if there's something different you will have done this morning, speak that now. Holy Spirit, speak that now. Let this be a sacred moment as we give back to you. You ask for so little from our lives, Lord, and, and let us give back to you joyfully in this monetary manner at this time. Father, take this and use it for your glory. Not for this church's glory, not for any individual's glory, but Lord, take these, uh, these gifts, this offering, and use it for your glory. And let the world know what you can do with so little. Father, we praise you with our lives, and we praise you with our lips, and we praise you with our gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. For his wonderful grace and mercy, I just wonder if there might be a few that have a word of praise or a word of testimony for what God has done in your life this week as we have participated in this fast. Now, there's one thing you got to do. You got to come up here to give it. I just knocked out half a dozen people. Just kidding. We're all friends. We all know everybody. And so, Tim, 
Get us started. Would you please? Good morning. Okay. I uh, I know it's been a long week for everybody. Um, I felt uh, a long week go by. In fact, uh, some people call this a fast. I would like to call it a slow. <laughs> I, I, I told that joke to my teens on Wednesday, and uh, they groaned too. So, um, anyway. About halfway through the week, I, I was marking to Becky about, I was getting a little discouraged because I felt like I was concentrating more on being hungry than on the spiritual growth that I was trying to go through. And that focus was off. Well, you all heard probably the, the saying about life, it's not just, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And that came to mind a lot this week, and I, but I, I would say that I would disagree with that to a, to a, to a point. It is also about the destination. Uh, the destination is for me is that I'm going to spend the rest of eternity with my Heavenly Father. Likewise with the journey, what I learned this week was that I'm going to spend the journey of my life as a servant of God and as a servant of my fellow man. And that's, that's something that's really neat to me on work with me some more is, is that I need to work more on being a servant of everyone here and everyone out there uh, and a servant of my God. I'm only up here because um, one thing I learned this week is complete obedience to God. And uh, that's kind of something. But um, I learned a greater yieldedness to God than I've ever had before. And um, He showed me attitudes that, and motivations that I've had that are not pure. And um, I have realized that I have greatly limited God's power because I have not been willing to trust Him. And. Um, so I guess the great, I guess the biggest thing is feeling his closeness in a way I've never felt it before, and having this greater yieldedness. And all those songs we sang this morning spoke to things that I went through spiritually this week. And um, I have a greater hope for those who are not saved and helping me to be a servant also. That's the word God gave to me to be my um, my word for the new year, I guess. But um, I just want to say I uh, do surrender all to him, and I want his will to be done. I had a horrible time sleeping this week. And the other night, God woke me up about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And all these voices started going through my head. And I knew it wasn't God. And I just said, no, I want to hear from you, God. And for at least the next two hours, I just laid there in bed. And God had so much to say that my mind just overflowed. I recently wrote an article for The Voice. And in that article, he said, I don't listen to God. Guess what? I'm going to listen to him now. Because he just filled my heart. And I knew it was his voice because it was consistent with his love. I praise him. I never shy away from a microphone, so. Um, there was nothing that happened this week. And some of you might be sitting there in that same boat that nothing happened this week that was, that was radical. But um, I want to encourage you because uh, through our Sunday school class, Jackie and I started the process of fasting a few months ago and fasting regularly. Uh, for a purpose. And the purpose that we were fasting for was fulfilled prior to this fast. So I want to encourage you, whatever you're fasting for, God will provide that for you. And it may not be this month, it may not be next month, it may not be this year, but it's an exciting moment when you can look back and you can say, I did that for three months, and I practiced that for three months, and in the times where I felt like, why am I continuing to do this when nothing's happening? And then it occurs it's in this exciting moment to say, to God be the glory. Um, that discipline was not in vain. So I want to encourage you, if something did not happen this week, uh, it will. And just continue being faithful to the Lord.
I want to say I started off this fast expecting to just fast television. I tried fasting when um, Lee's class fasted for a practice three-day fast. And I got through a day and a half and I couldn't do any more. So I went into it expecting um, just to do TV. Well, Monday morning I was um, going through the little book that the pastor gave us and I really, really wanted to do this fast. I wanted to do the whole thing. So I prayed that God would help me get through breakfast, and if he would help me get through breakfast, then I would do lunch, and if he got me through lunch, I would do supper, and he got me through the entire week. Um, I'm not saying I'm not about to fall over from weakness right now, but <laughs> he got me through the whole week, and um, it's been um, a really good time. I haven't had to work, so um, it was probably easier for me than for some of the rest of you. But um, anyway, um, he told me, in more than one way that, um, although I'm not seeing anything major right now, that um, in a year ahead, we're going to see changes. So I already have a journal um, started. I'm waiting for everything that I can write down in that journal because I know he's going to do great things in the church, and I know he's going to do great things in our lives personally and our kids' lives. And um, I guess I just need to say praise the Lord for getting me through this fast and, and thank him for what we had to look forward to. Um, the past seven days has been a little tough for me. I've never went a day in my life without eating, and but it's been it's been a journey, and it's been a long journey. And um, the past couple of days, I've been very emotional, and I've never been in that state in my life. Um, it's just been I've cried over movies, over commercials, I, you know, and and I know that's God working in me, and I just. Uh, Pray that all of us get through this and our church becomes stronger. And I've just prayed through this fasting that our family grows more spiritually. Um, and I just, you know, it's just been a journey for me. And I thank God that God helped me through this. Thank you. This week I fasted uh, one meal a day and television. And um, I discovered, one of the things I discovered was that uh, all these times that I said, um, I don't have time for Bible study, I don't have time for devotion. I was saying I don't have time for God. And I just uh, learned a challenge for myself and other people. We have time. I work full time. I, I have a lot of obligations in that. We do have time, but some of the, that time that we use, we choose not to spend time with God. And then when we do spend time with God, we really do get rewarded. And I also found that I slept better at night, and um, I was still tired the next morning because I prayed through the night, too. Thank you. Well, as I prayed, God dug around in my heart and in my life, and he found four restitutions that I needed to make. And I can tell you what they were because it's none of your business. <laughs> Uh, they seemed like small things, but evidently to God they were large things. So he helped me to make those four resolutions, and I rededicated my life to him. And as I was praying over those four things and asking him to forgive me for not taking care of it, I felt as if he reached down and said, Daughter, your sins are forgiven you. So I am his, and I want to do what he wants me to do and be all that I can be for him. I was certainly not brave about going into this uh, so I took kind of a chicken's way out but at least I took one step breakfast is the most important meal of the day and I can eat it anytime all day whatever snacks in between whatever but I don't suppose we should enter it thinking well I can do this but I can't do that but that's what I did. And uh, so I fasted breakfast and caffeine and the sweets. And uh, probably because I didn't uh, fast the other two meals, I didn't have any ill physical effects other than the hunger pains and the growling going on. And of course those were signals to pray for one thing and another, uh, this might actually have been selfish. I didn't have an outward reaching goal in mind because I knew I needed it. I needed it. 
And uh, but but the the main thing I did learn from it then is that this is just the beginning. Never fasted before. And I've thought sometimes that fasting was kind of like when I've been really busy doing a job or a project or a hobby or something that, you know, I'd work right on through a meal. Well, I didn't miss the meal because I went back and got it. <laughs> but uh, not this week. And uh, that's, that's the goal was to begin a series of fasting for me. I took one little step. I'm going to take a bigger one, and a bigger one, and a bigger one. As we go on, that's, that's what he's laid on my heart, and that's what I want to do, is to follow him one step at a time. Um, God's revealed a lot of things to me this week, um, but one of the main things that he revealed to me is that I try to do God's job for him. So I look at myself, and I say, I do this, I do this wrong, I do this wrong, I hurt that person. I need to fix it. But what he told me is, no, I know you. You don't need to know yourself. You don't need to figure out what's wrong with you because you are a good and faithful servant to me. And I, it is my job to do that. So that is one thing God pointed out to me. And actually, it was a burden that was lifted and not him, um, you know, convicting me of anything necessarily that I do except for that, um, but more of a reassurance that I am his servant and that he's the one that surrounds me and guides me through my life. And um, so I just continue to pray that um, he, will, he will continue to guide me on this journey that we're on in the family. And it's been wonderful. Thanks. I, too, have never done anything like this before. And uh, so, but uh, it was interesting. Uh, I believe Monday night, the scripture uh, for the, in the fasting book, uh, the Psalms 63, and uh, <clears throat> my soul will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. Now, hearing that, when you're hungry, you're thinking of that. Now, another version says, uh, as the, as a rich feast. And thinking about a feast while you're fasting is, is not an easy thing to do. So, but but it helped me realize. Let me realize that God's spiritual nourishment is so much more important than any food and the satisfaction I get from food. And I get a lot of satisfaction from food. So, but God has helped me. I, again, nothing spectacular has happened uh, to me or anybody that I know uh, particularly this week. But I know, as you, as you said, I appreciated your comments, Seth, that, that God will be faithful uh, in, in His promise that. So. Thank you. Good morning. Um, this week I gave up TV, and I didn't know how, you know, I thought, oh, I don't know, it might be hard. Um, and it was just a little bit, but then I, I prayed and got into the Word, and it was almost like a breeze, and, um, but still, it was hard. And I... Everything that I did this week, it was listening to the radio, um, praying, um, reading my devotion, and just, this stood out. Um, everything came back as love and kindness, and I'm like, Lord, I am... It's kind, and I think I'm very loving. And I just reassured that I'm a mom, and I'm going to do everything perfect. And unfortunately, it doesn't go that way when I want to do it. And uh, so he has shown me that I really need to trust in him. And to be in the Word and pray, because he was saying, Tammy, you're not doing that. And... Uh, and I love my children very much, and I um, I pray for them, and I love my husband, and I pray for this church, everybody in here. And I and I'm like, Lord, just show me. And he's like, you just need to not say anything and listen. 
and he, he's going to work through me if I listen. And it was hard. It's very hard. But um, the other day, and I'm hurry, I'm sorry. Um, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but I opened the Bible one morning, and it said a kick in the pants. And it said the Old Testament kingdom of Judah needed a kick in the pants, a shot in the arm, a knock on the head. And they, they rebelled against God, for which God plainly, directly judged them through the prophet Isaiah. And though foreign nations, they deserved to be scolded and punished, but God was the wise, and then, like he is now, he simply opened their eyes. Your vision is too small. Because of your pain, he said, you're forced on your lack and lack of nations, lack of power, lack of unity, lack of an army. Hang it all. Expand your tent pegs out a few notches and live as he have it all. Because you do, you have my prophecy of the mighty nations. You have my undying love. Um, my forgiveness, my power, you have me. There are days when I need such a vision. I tire easily at times when I, and when I tire, I want to go into my tents of pity and frustration and anger. My small tents are comfortable. Though they are dark and cramped, I feel sense of comfort. But not for long. God tells me in Isaiah 54, 5, that my maker is my husband, and he desires my company under a large tent that I might expand his knowledge, our kingdom, with him. And as I do so, I find a fresh breeze and a new strength to deal with my pity, frustrations, and anger, and I am renewed. So I stand by that. I, I just love the Lord, and I thank you. Um, and I'm excited because I'm going to try to fast because this is my first first time. And I know I didn't fast food, but I, I, I believe it's going to happen. So thank you. Lord, help me and all of us. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be up here. I thought this was more for my class, and we didn't even get into it today. I was at the store yesterday, and going through the Christmas clearance section, I seen joy. And I thought, this is what God has spoke to me about this week, was joy. And I thought, I'm going to get this and put this in my kitchen. And I know it's Christmas decoration, but I don't care. I need a reminder every day in my face about joy. Um, I think that's what God uh, showed me I was lacking this last year. This last year has been very challenge for, you know, for me personally and I look back and I can understand why it ever even became that way. Um, as far as fasting, we heard about it growing up. I just really didn't quite understand or grasp the whole purpose of it. I thought it was just meant to solve problems. You have a problem, oh just fast and God will give you an answer. But um, this week, um, like a month or two ago, I was grasping the idea of sacrifice, and I thought uh, sacrifice speaks to me as my love language, that if I sacrifice for you, it's because I really love you. If someone sacrifices for me, it's because they love me. And I thought, Debbie, that's fasting. God doesn't need us to fast, but um, I'm loving him when I do that. And so that was a big step for me to learn that. And then uh, I thought, well, what do I choose to fast? I, uh, and my husband, every morning in this last year, I get up and I drink my cup of coffee and I just unwind and I open the newspaper and I do every puzzle in there. I do crossword puzzles and the crypto quotes and the word searches. And if I can't get it all through the day, that's papers there all day long and it consumes my mind. And I told myself, it's because I'm retired and I'm keeping my mind alert. Well, what I realized what I was doing was um, when I would hit a rough spot in the road, I'd pick up that paper and occupy my mind so I wouldn't have to deal with things instead of looking to the Lord. 
So that's what I fasted all this week. I haven't dwelled into any of that. And um, the Lord brought to my mind the parable of the sower. And uh, I don't mean to take up time, but um, I just want to read to you because all of us in this room fall into one of these four categories. All of us. And I want you to think about what category do you fall into. And uh, I'm skipping over to where he explains more what they are. It says, um, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. Um, the second uh, sower is the one on whom seed was sown on the rocky places. This is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but is only temporary. And when infliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately falls away. Um, and the one on whom the seed was sown among the thorns, this is the man who hears the word and the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. That is me right now. And the last one talks about how the one on whom seed was sown and the good soil and this man hears the word and understands it who indeed bears fruit and brings forth some hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirtyfold. And I thought, Debbie, you were there at one point. How did you go back to the rocky soil? I let the weeds come up and choke me because of my everyday heartache and trials. I was not living victorious in the Lord. God wants us to be victorious. He wants to be joyful. He wants us to sacrifice for him so that we can have joy. And that's what I grasp out of this this week. And I know somebody in this room is in one of these categories that is not in the final one. Think about that. Most of us in this room have never, ever fasted before. True? How many of you have ever fasted, period? before how many in this room have fasted three days before how many in this room have fasted a week before you will never ever forget this week you'll be old people and you'll remember the week we fasted some of you have been changed for life. God has spoken to you in mighty and powerful ways because of what you've done in sacrifice for the Lord. This week will reveal itself over the next weeks and months and years. And hopefully somewhere down the road we'll do it again. But what I find fascinating is that those of you who have said I've never really fasted for a long period of time are people my age. You've been in the church all your life and no pastor has ever led your church in a week-long fast. I say all that to say this. Thank God we have a man of God who challenged us spiritually. And let us in a fast and in an activity we'll never forget the rest of our lives. Thank God for our pastor. And God be the glory that we have a man who seeks his face. Actually, I'm not probably going to preach too much. I'm just going to give my testimony of this week. This week we... Uh, we have been on a seven-day corporate journey of seeking God through prayer and fasting. For most of us, as we just realized, this has been a week uh, in unexplored territory. We've never been this way before. And uh, God has been with us, and he, and he has helped us. For all of us, it's been a time of carrying the cross, of fasting and prayer, in which we have experienced a new 
God's grace and pleasure. We have carried the cross. Whenever we hear this scripture again, take up your cross and follow me, we can say, I did that at least once, and that was this week. And I know that we've done it more than that. It's not been an easy journey. For some, it has been especially difficult. The sacrifice has been significant, and the results are still undecided. Others have experienced a new touch from God and are already seeing and experiencing what He's doing. There's been confession and repentance. There's been release from bondage. There's been be intercession on behalf of others uh, and, and, and the lost, particularly. There's been a, re a release of burdens. There has been a renewal of faith in God's moving on behalf of His people in small as well as in great ways. There have been words of assurance and challenge from the Word of God. In many instances, we are waiting in faith to see and to hear and to experience what God will do. We've humbled ourselves before God this week, and we trust that our doing so has been seen by Him and favorably received. We have approached this time with sincerity and desire. Our desire has not been to manipulate God, to try to get Him to do what we want Him to do, but to wait for Him. Our cry has been, let my longings for you be as strong as the longings for the thing I am fasting from. That comes out of Psalm 63. Our desire has been to obey what we believed was his call to this time of fasting. And so I want to take just a few moments to share some of what God spoke to me this week in this, uh, in, in this fast. On Monday, I wrote, today begins an unprecedented journey. At 12.40 a.m., I woke up. I got up, did some reading, and began praying for my fasters, those who were joining me in, in this journey. I was hungry all day Sunday, even though I ate regularly. Didn't really adjust my diet all that much. I think it was in anticipation of this week. I celebrate how I feel right now. I have never been more aware of God in my life than I do now. And here was my personal prayer focus for that day. Intimacy and anointing. Remember we took care of that word intimacy last Sunday? All right, we're good. Healing, purity, and the courage to witness. Now this is a little bit silly, but here we go. I shared this with the board on Tuesday night. When I was praying on Tuesday morning, for some reason, I thought of a record, an LP, with a scratch on it. And you know what happens, those of you that are my age and older, you know what happens when an LP gets a scratch. It just keeps going, it's the same, 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 it's the same. Same thing over again unless you bump it. Thought came to my mind. Jesus, you have healed the scratches in my life. So let's make beautiful music together. And he said that to me. I want to make beautiful music in your life and in your heart. Uh, in fact, there's a song. There's an old song. I've been trying to sing it this week, but it, it, it didn't all come all the way back. But maybe it will someday. On, uh, on, on Wednesday, part of my other devotional reading was 1 Corinthians 15 talks about the resurrection. And then I came back to uh, what I'd read a few weeks ago in Revelation chapter 5. And this is what spoke to me. What a privilege it will be to stand among the throngs of heaven in a new body, shouting, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Won't that be a great time? There will be myriads, multitudes upon multitudes will be singing the praises of God as we gather around His throne and as He, and as he uh, uh, we, we, we are there. We have reached, as Tim talked about, wherever Tim went, our destination, when we have reached that destination. Um, day four was a day of intercession and I brought to the Lord once again my group of 30. I've got about 30 people that I've been praying for for several months. Some of them are families, some of them are, are single, are individuals. Uh, some of you are here this morning, and I'm not telling who you are. But I've been praying, and God 
is, uh, is, is speaking and that he will continue to speak. And then one day I, uh, I exercised the, um, the sense of, of, of writing from Scripture. And I, I was in first, or I was in Ephesians chapter one, verses fifteen through twenty-three. And Paul is, is talking about the Ephesian people, about the prayer that he is saying for them, that he has for them. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better i pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe that power is like the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. And I, I, I wrote this as a prayer to Jesus. Ever since I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and fell in love with all of the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks and asking God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, to give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that I may know the hope that you have called me to, the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints and your incomparably great power for us who believe. Jesus, that power is like the mighty working of the Father's strength that he exerted in you when he raised you from the dead and seated you at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the age to come. Jesus, God the Father, placed all things under your feet and appointed you to be the head over everything for the church, which is your body filled with you, who fills everything in every way. And then also that same day, I was praying, and uh, we were play, praying that day about families. And no, we weren't. We were praying about something else. But anyway, my attention was drawn to my wife. And here's my desire. To sanctify and purify my love for my wife. Fill me with passion to love her and serve her even as Christ loves the church. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds it and cares for it just as Christ does the church. And my brothers, this is our call to love those that God has given to us. And then, uh, just briefly, as I was praying along on Saturday, not everything we brought to the Lord this week will be completed this week. Continue to pray and fast. And I've felt the presence of God more than any other time I can remember. I can, I, I, I can move. Oh, well, forget that. I'll get you later. Can't read it. But here's what I wrote this morning. The corporate prayer fact, fact, uh, focus was for the master's plan of discipleship. Show me how to proceed, or us to proceed, to the next level of implementation. Thank you for this challenging yet simple way of disciple making. And one day, in one of the in one of the entries, 
my final comment was, it's all about Jesus. And when we come to that point, we are getting close to where God wants us to be. Well, I want to, uh, I want to just mention a couple of things to you. I want to repeat, not everything we brought to the Lord this week in our prayer time is completed this week. Our responsibility is to continue to fast and pray. Our, uh, we have sought to establish this week a climate of seeking God through this fast. His answers may come at any time according to His timing. You see, we serve Him. He does not serve us. Second thing is, now that you have experienced an extended fast, Make weekly or monthly fasting a pattern for your life. Just keep it up. Keep it up. Fasting for decisions. One of the things that Lisa Tidoff said uh, told me the other day uh, as we were visiting, she said that the, the, the fasts that our church has been on have, have changed the conversation in our church. She said we talk about fasting. Fasting for decisions. Fasting for protection. Fasting for our children. Do you remember what she said the other night? How it was, uh, it was uh, a, a, a privilege that on the child's, on, on our child's date of their birth, every month, spend that day praying and fasting for that child. Think about that for a bit. For the ministry of the church, for God's purposes to be fulfilled in your life. Now the final thing I want to say is, take it easy on re-entry. All right? This is no day to go to the buffet, all right? Some of you have not eaten since last Sunday evening. You have drank, you have, you have had water, you've had juice, you've had... Don't you just love chicken broth? Woo! Amen. It's great. <laughs> so, those of you that are mothers, you know this. Try the brat diet. You know what the brat diet is? After your digestive system has been not working right for a while, Bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. That's a good way to get back into getting the system moving, working again. I may have not a good choice of words. <laughs> we have not lived on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. We have eaten food that the world knows not of. We have been satisfied with the richest of foods. Our food has been to do the work of God in prayer and fasting. Now we enter into a new normal life. We can't go back to the same old habits, spiritual habits or otherwise, because we will diminish our effectiveness and our intimacy with God. Of course, things will proceed and progress but we will not be the same. And so today, even this moment, if you would, if, if, if on that connection card, you'd flip it over to the back side and say, because of this fast, I, or as a result of this fast, I, and just take a moment to, to, uh, to write on it. And um, we're going to be standing here in just a moment and singing a doxology, but I need to give you some instructions before we're all done. So ushers, I think it'd be a good time to, uh, to receive those cards when we're standing and singing the doxology, okay? Very good, very good. First of all, uh, over there are tables, and over there is lunch. Careful, easy. We have to make a transition. We don't have enough chairs to do chairs and tables. So, what we need to do is, kind of starting with this side, I need you to pick up a chair and take it over there and put it by a table. Now we may need we may need to make some room, a little more room between the tables. I don't know. So if we can, we'll, once we get this side kind of emptied out, we can push those uh, bleachers back and slide some tables around. And some of you fellows that are handier and smarter than I can can watch uh, can watch over that and take care of that. Um, and also, don't forget to pick up your kids. Those of you that have kids in in the, the children's department, they would appreciate it very much. Um, you are all welcome to stay. Now, I got to tell you, it's only soup, soup and crackers. That's all it is. You know, if you're looking for cake, forget it. But uh, everyone, if you would, just just stay. 
spend some time fellowshipping with the body of Christ. This particular body of Christ is uh, as imperfect as we often are. Spend some time just getting to, to fellowship with one another. I want to pray and then we'll sing. God, our Heavenly Father, as you have guided us through this journey, we thank you. Thank you for the strength that you have given us. Thank you for the perseverance that we have, that we have uh, uh, exercised. Thank you for what you have done spiritually in our hearts and our lives. Thank you for the words that we have, that, that have sometimes almost jumped off the pages of the Bible. Maybe the, the, uh, the Bible that for so long we didn't understand, all of a sudden something just reached out and grabbed us around the heart. God, thank you. Thank you for calling us to repentance. Thank you, Lord, for obedience. Thank you for your wonderful presence. No God, as we move forward through this year, having established this particular tone, this particular discipline, God, we pray that you would keep us close to you all throughout the year and that we would be drawn ever closer to you and that we might love you and love one another and love a lost and dying world. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Let's stand together and pass those cards to the center as we sing, shall we? And this is going to be our benediction and our grace for the meal. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. May the Lord be with you.